Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. I want to share something that I've been uh, dealing with a little bit the last last few weeks. I just shared it uh, at, at a meetup. Uh, I thought it might be good to capture for YouTube. So basically, uh, I had this question that came up, which was, we need to do Spark streaming and we want to do it from Apache Kafka, which is pretty common. That's what a lot of my uh, real world streaming use cases do. And we need to do it from Synapse Spark pools. And that's a little different. I've done it from Azure Databricks quite a bit and and work through exactly how to get to the jars and set up the permissions there from Synapse is a little different. And so let me share a little bit of that story and I'm gonna do it through some screenshots so that I don't have to worry about restarting clusters and things like that for you. So I got this question the question was, I need Spark streaming on Apache Kafka in Azure Synapse. Uh, this is easy, right? It's, it's Apache Spark, it should work, no big deal. And so the question is, is sort of like anything Apache Spark can do, we can do on Synapse, right? And the answer is maybe, but, but, but it's not going to be straightforward every time. And so in this case, nothing too crazy really for running Apache Spark and trying to read from Kafka for the first time. But I get this exception that says that it can't find the Kafka data source. So not to brag, but I know what this is. I, I've been through this a few times in different cloud environments. And so the problem is we're missing libraries that are needed for the Kafka source because they're external uh, libraries that are part of the Spark repository, but they're not installed all them automatically when you install Apache Spark. And so if you're running standalone, if you're running on EMR and you're using Spark submit, all you have to do is add this packages option to your Spark submit and get the versions right. The 2.12 at the end is the Scala and the 3.1.2 is the Spark version. Get those right add packages and you're good to go. But if we're working with Synapse, we don't exactly run Spark submits and things like that typically. I'm trying to work in notebooks in this case. And so what you'll do is when you set up your Spark pool for the first time, you'll uh, go ahead and make sure you have the right permissions on the storage account as it mentions. And then you'll on the next screen, pay attention to what version you choose. I usually go with Spark 3.1, which is at the moment 3.1.2. Um, there's another page once you've set up your pools where you can go look at all the details of the files i'll show you the link in the docs as well and then the python version and scala version come into play as you work with different dependencies in those different languages and so um, if you want to know what's already installed if you want to get to that giant list here's some links to the docs uh, you can probably find it pretty easily by searching but just in case here's the full url or you can go run this uh, python command to see a list of resources now um, the way I found to work best, there's a few ways to do it. The way I found to work best most consistently is for non-Python files especially is to use workspace packages. So uh, from your like Synapse resource, you'll go to workspace packages and go ahead and upload the libraries you need here. Now you'll go to your Spark pool that you've set up and uh, choose that action button and go to packages. And that'll give you a couple ways to add packages. If you're dealing with Python, you could have like a Python requirements file that you upload. Uh, that's the step above, but the one I've highlighted is if you're doing with jars, if you're doing dealing with custom Python wheels files, things that aren't um, hosted on the the Python index, then you'll want to upload those package or attach those workspace packages directly here. I would also recommend you click this force new settings at the bottom. So to make sure that this is taking effect, to try and uh, tell your pool to restart if it's already going and and make this take effect before it starts to run any other jobs. Uh, you'll want to check that box. So if you get to this point, you have your packages installed, your uh, pool, your Spark pool has restarted if you chose that option to uh, start a fresh session after you do the installs, then we can run a notebook that is using Kafka as a source or a destination. In this case, I'm using Kafka as a source. Once I kick off my notebook, I can go look at the monitoring section of Synapse and find Spark application. There I locate the correct application, go look at the logs. And what I'm really looking for is that one, I don't get any errors, I don't get red error messages. And two, if I'm doing streaming, which is a lot of times the case with uh, the Kafka format, I can look for this on query progress payload that we have showing on the screenshot here. And I'm looking for things like number of input rows. If there's actually data flowing into Kafka or event hubs, and I'm actually getting data out of it, I'll see number of input rows will be set to something larger than zero. And that's usually a sign that things are working, of course, Keep an eye on those logs and just see if you're getting any other errors. You may have to go determine other libraries that are missing. Maybe the versions aren't correct, that kind of thing. So on that note, where did I get the libraries I used? 
I, I like to use mvnrepository.com, mavenrepository.com, and I can search for the correct package names. I can then find the correct versions, download the jar right from there. Now, each of these may have some dependencies that are important that aren't already on the Spark pool. And by basically trying one library at a time, running it and seeing where I had class not found errors, I was able to then go find the dependencies. Uh, I also looked at the source code and the source, uh, the source pom.xml file to help me understand what the dependencies were that, that were not provided by Spark and go trace those through. So typically to find the version, we would look at the Scala version 2.12, uh, that's in bold in this library here, matches what is on my, my Spark pool. And then I also wanna make sure my Spark version matches. 3.1.2 is my Spark version. I'll make sure that that's the same as what's on my Spark pool. The way I got the 3.1.2 specifically was by looking at the logs and then looking at the Spark history server, which says a specific version. Now, Microsoft does have a custom build of Spark. It's using open source Spark, but there's some things that they build a little differently. And I found that the exact version 3.1.2 for the Spark SQL Kafka library was not quite right. There's basically a Spark config that is a Spark option that is uh, not included in the Microsoft package version that I would see if I go look at the current uh, Apache Spark 3.1.2 source code. So as I played around a little bit and basically found uh, for the error I was getting, it was trying to use a class or try to use an option that just didn't exist. And so I went and found the, the last version of Spark SQL Kafka that didn't even try to use that option. So I could find something that might be compatible, kind of trace through from there to find uh, any dependencies that that would work and get those on the right version. So this is my full list of libraries that I use, 3.0.3 for the Spark SQL Kafka and Spark Token Provider Kafka. And then for the others, I just grab the latest versions of each and, and those worked out okay. I will admit this can be a bit tricky. Obviously looking into source code isn't always the path we choose to go down initially when we're trying to just run a Spark job on a pool, but with a little bit of, of practice at that or by people like me doing it and sharing videos out there, Hopefully we'll save you some of that effort and you can just use the manage packages feature, download the correct jars for what you're doing and get them all set up pretty easily. So to automate this, you could use PowerShell or some other scripting language to, to make this happen. Uh, I've met with Mark Cunningham, who's at the uh, Capgemini UK uh, company, and he's shown me some stuff that they've done. And one of them is a DevOps extension, which will actually set up these packages for you. It'll take your Python wheels files from a directory and add those as workspace packages and install it on every single Spark pool. So uh, keep an eye on, you know, test out what that does to your Spark pools. Is it going to restart anything that can't be restarted? Um, but that's a really cool feature either to take the PowerShell and customize it if you have a different need than the Python wheel files or to take their DevOps extension, just use it from Azure DevOps pipeline. So that is my story about how we got Kafka source working within Azure Synapse. And so uh, if you are working with something new where you have to add these packages, just those versions are very important. So keep an eye on that and, and find the right versions. It might take some trial and error to get it right. It can be a little frustrating at times because you may think that the Spark code has something in it that has been tweaked a little bit or is a little bit different in the Microsoft version. But I didn't encounter that too much. It was mostly finding the correct versions of libraries. As always, if this content's useful, uh, this is kind of a unique focused use case. But if you want to know more about data engineering and Azure Databricks and Synapse and other things that I talk about, subscribe to this channel. Uh, go check out dustinbanner.com to quickly browse through a lot of the content I've created in the past. Thanks for joining. See you next time.